Let me show you what our rooms really looked like in the 1980s. Stick around. All I need some tasty waves, cool buzz, and I'm fine. Welcome to the Rad Graham channel. I'm Graham, back with another video. And this week, I wanted to um, kind of highlight a photo that I had as one of my thumbnails in uh, one of my videos at the beginning of the year. Um, and it's an actual photo that I have, and it's me in bed asleep. And um, it kind of made me start to think about, and I'll pop it up here on the screen, about uh, how um, obviously we know this, but there's a lot of influencers on Instagram uh, like totally 80s room, um, lots of 80s ones. I follow him. Um, obviously, that's not what our rooms look like in the 1980s. Um, so really, our rooms are just nostalgia rooms of collecting things that were our favorite things as we were a kid. Uh, but I do know that there's also this new trend, which I think is great, where a lot of the younger people are kind of experiencing the 80s and really liking the 80s and really adopting the 80s. Um, and starting to kind of live that way, decorate the rooms and stuff like that. Uh, but when I came across this photo, like I said, when I use it as a thumbnail for a past video, it got me thinking, man, our rooms really didn't look that good back in the day. Um, they were, you know, just not as nice as uh, obviously when you have a well curated room. Uh, so I kind of wanted to go over, there's a few things that, um, that stand out in this picture that kind of made me remember uh, being in that room and, and uh, growing up as a kid in comparison to our collection rooms nowadays. And then, of course, in, to comparison of the ultimate 80s room from the 80s movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off, where um, as uh, cool as that room is, Ferris's room is, it is uh, highly unlikely that 99.99% uh, .99 of uh, kids had a room like his. Now, on one side of the room, he had the posters. He had a lot of that stuff up on the wall that was stereotypical of our rooms to each their own. We had posters. We'd rip out pages for magazines from either Teen Beat or Rock and Roll magazines and stuff like that. But I do understand that movies back then probably are, uh, put marketing. They were marketing other brands and stuff in there. And so just real quickly, when you take a look at um, the items that were in Ferris Bueller's room, it's... Uh, Again, highly unlikely unless you're really, really rich. So, and I'll pop these across the screen before we get into uh, to my video, uh, to my room. And so, uh, first of all, he had the, uh, what I believe is an Amiga computer, which is a Commodore Amiga computer that was sitting back there by his window when he opens it up. Um, and back in the day, I believe this uh, 1986, that would have been around a $1,200 uh, computer, uh, which in today's dollars is roughly about $3,000. Uh, the TV that he had in his night in his uh, uh, entertainment center was a Sony Trinitron. Uh, depending on the model of the Trinitron in the day, those were from three to six hundred dollars, which would be seven hundred to fourteen hundred dollars today. Um, the Carver DTL one hundred CD player uh, was around uh, six fifty back uh, in uh, the eighties, and the Carver two thousand receiver, which was their higher end, because they had a Carver one thousand receiver. The Carver 2000 receiver was uh, $1,500 to $2,000 back in the 80s. He, of course, had a Fender basement amp. Uh, he had an audio source EQ1. And, of course, the coup de grace, what he had in his room, is the iconic keyboard um, that he had in there making the uh, throw-up sounds with the disc. That's an Emu Emulator 2 keyboard. And in the 80s, that was almost $8,000 to $10,000. So if you kind of add all that up, do a rough estimate. Um, they were probably it was about ten to eleven thousand dollars spent in 1986. In today's dollars, that's about thirty thousand uh, dollars in 2024 at the at the uh, time of filming this. Um, so, little unrealistic unless uh, they were extremely rich. Uh, I can't imagine uh, the majority of us back in the day having that. First of all, computers. Um, we had one for the family. And so if you did have a computer, if you were lucky enough to have a computer, it definitely wasn't in your room. It was in a den or in our area, it was in a little area. As soon as you walked through the front door, there was a little desk that fit perfectly right there, more of a study. And that's where we had our Commodore 64. Um, and then uh, we normally had one TV in the house and that was in the living room. Um, 
some of us did have smaller ones. I had one later on, um, but uh, yeah, it's very highly unlikely. And then, then there also Ferris had a camcorder that was uh, in the room too. I wasn't able to really um, figure out what model that was, but he also had that. So going back to the picture that I'll pop up up here. Uh, first of all, let's just uh, address the elephant in the room and that's my teddy bear. Um, that's George. And um, I was probably, hmm, 10 years old in this picture, maybe 11 at the oldest. So I understand maybe if I was 11, it's probably a little too old to be sleeping with a teddy bear, but um, I was nonetheless. And uh, I'll pop up a picture because I still do have that teddy bear. Uh, he guards my rad cave uh, sitting on top of my Highlander sword. Uh, and I don't know how, um, again, with a lot of the stuff, how I still have it. I uh, just never got rid of him. Um, I actually got him missing the nose. It was used from my cousin and she let me pick from some stuffed animals that she had. And I ended up taking that one, which, you know, back in 82 or 83, when I got him, he was already missing his nose and was already kind of beat up. I guess that's why maybe I liked it. Um, so um, I got him. So then the other thing, let's focus on the sheets. Those are totally, I mean, if I can find these sheets nowadays, I would definitely get some, but those were the quintessential pastel pink and blue sheets. Um, kind of reminds me of the Golden Girls. Um, sleeping on a bed that was a hand-me-down bed of uh, and I hated it as a kid it was a, a really thick paint avocado green kind of smeared stain that was on there I honestly do not know where the bed um, came from it just one day I had it in my room and that's what I slept on so let's go to some of the things obviously that I can point out and I'll wind up popping the comparisons uh, up across the uh, the screen here uh, obviously, as I addressed in my last video, I have the Ninja poster there. You can see that there, which uh, if you watched the last video, I was able to find that exact poster from somebody in England uh, in perfect condition, got it framed, and it's it's in my room now. Um, second thing, I go back to the corner of the room. It's kind of hard to see, but it is a, I believe it's a Sony uh, boombox where the speakers were removable and those are sitting on top um of that so it was a uh just a dual cassette player that we were able to listen to our music on and um you know you can still find something similar like that on ebay uh for not too too much money so as you can tell if you look on the opposite side of the room i most likely had my quiet riot tape in there for uh, mental health you can see that sitting on top of the clock uh clock radio and that tape came out in 1983 is when mental health came out. So it could have been 1984 that uh, I ended up um, getting that tape. I'm not too sure, um, but it was roughly around that time. So it was definitely jamming out to that tape in that boom box over there. Um, the tape is sitting on top of the, the iconic flip clock radio, uh, General Electric. This was my mom's. I remember she used to have this in her room when I was even smaller than that. And again, we didn't always get new stuff. If my mom got something new back then, uh, we got it. We got the hand me down. Um, so I ended up with that clock radio because my mom, I think she went digital. She ended up getting a digital clock. Um, and I would absolutely love to find one of these clocks now in the wild. Uh, obviously I can go on eBay and get one and my wife won't let me because she says you don't need it. But if you ever find one at a thrift store or at a flea market or a garage sale, uh, I'll definitely be able to pick it up, but most of the time they don't work. Um, but if I can get one that works, that would be um, absolutely amazing. Don't know what happened to it. Then you go to the corner of the desk and um, it is a, um, it's a Walkman. I don't know if it's exactly a Sony Walkman, but it is a, a, a Walkman type radio. Um, and I had, I remember breaking the belt clip off because there used to be a clip on there that you could hook on your belt uh, to carry it around. Uh, so we may do, I winded up getting that yellow, um, shoelace that was there and, um, tying that around and somehow tying it, you know, looping it through my belt and was able to, um, uh, walk around with it when I did yard work and whatnot. Um, and then last but not least, the, um, the desk was another hand-me-down. Uh, so nothing, nothing new and nothing fancy in that room. Uh, some of the other things as I got older, because I stayed a, I stayed in that room, that was the room I grew up in. Um, I remember by the time I was a teenager, maybe 13 or 14, 
Uh, I had a Alyssa Milano poster because she was all the rage from Who's the Boss back in the day. I had that poster on there. And then I had, um, and it might not be these exact ones, but I had, I remember having a couple Sylvester Stallone ones, definitely of Cobra and then of um, Rambo, but I don't remember which one, but we had those plastered up on the wall. Um, so that is the one thing when you go through a lot of these rooms that you see pictures of online from the 80s, we definitely, depending on like uh, music posters for sure, actors um, or um, that you, you know, girls at the time that, you know, like the Heather Thomas or which was more in the 80s for me versus Farrah Fawcett for some guys in the 70s, although Farrah was still pretty popular in the 80s. Uh, Heather Thomas and other people were, were kind of in the spotlight at that point in time because of the fall guy. And, um, you know, so we would do that. We'd get Team Beat magazine. We'd rip out the page, staple it to the wall or tape, uh, tape it to the wall. And that's what we plastered all over our wall. So I would say on one side of Ferris's room where he's got the posters, he's got all that. That was pretty typical uh, because, you know, parents weren't going to spend a ton of money. As you can see in this one, um, my mom, everything in my room was pretty much a hand-me-down. The desk, the bed, the clock, uh, radio. The, uh, the boom box I might have gotten new, I, I really don't remember. And, um, and everything else was pretty much used and, and, and I loved it. We made it our own, we made do with it. Um, but anyway, uh, drop a comment, um, uh, drop a comment down below um, and talk about something that was in your room that you loved and you wish you could find, uh, whether it's a certain poster, uh, an electronic, um, I did eventually down the line get uh, my stepdad's Pioneer stereo that he had from the 70s. That was the wood grain with the aluminum face. It was actually a really badass piece of equipment. Even still to this day, um, it probably rivals um, what they're putting out on the market today. Um, and when they got divorced, he obviously took that with them. But uh, I, as a teenager from 16 to 17, I uh, definitely utilized that stereo a lot. Uh, so a lot of stuff we didn't get rid of. We just recycled it. Uh, moved it to another corner of the room. But what was your favorite thing in your room growing up? What is something, uh, and another comment, what's something that you had in your room growing up that you still have today? Maybe not in your room, but you have it saved, you have it boxed up um, in your room or in your house or in your garage or in your storage. Um, and again, if uh, this is something that you like, please consider liking the video, um, subscribing to the channel, and uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Thank you.